Abend, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren. Ich freue mich ganz herzlich, heute Abend Ryan McLaughlin hier mit uns verlassen zu können. Ryan McLaughlin dürfte Ihnen allen schon im Begriff sein. Er hatte Anfang des Jahres hier im Hause seine erste Einzelausstellung, eine große Erfolg damals. Wir präsentierten im OG2, also über unseren Köpfen quasi, eine Auswahl von neuen Bildern. Und während diese Auswahl insbesondere fokussiert war auf die Produktion des Künstlers der letzten zwei, drei Jahre, haben wir am heutigen Abend die Gelegenheit, einen weiterführenden Einblick in die Praxis von Michael McLaughlin zu bekommen. Er hat eine Auswahl an JPEGs mitgebracht, die er uns heute Abend vorführen wird und dabei über seine Arbeit sprechen wird. Ähm, die Insatz zum Kunstverein war natürlich schon zu sehen, in Deutschland relativ viel, im Rahmen der Ausstellung Based in Berlin <lacht> beispielsweise oder natürlich durch seine Berlin-Ausstellung in Berlin bei Markus Röttgen. Ich wünsche Ihnen viel, viel Freude bei dieser Einführung des Werks von Ryan McLaughlin. You will sit here, yeah? Or next year. Okay, thank you, Moritz, for that lovely introduction. Um, which I understood about 7% of, so thank you. Um, I'm going to speak in English, hopefully that's okay for everyone. I'll try to speak slowly and semi-clearly. Um, I've been living in Germany for a while now, uh, since 2003. Um, I've sort of been going back and forth between the US and Berlin. Um, and I'm now in Cologne for the summer um, and will be sort of tooting around the Rheinland and then other parts of Germany. Um, I went to school in the US uh, at the Rhode Island School of Design, um, which is in Providence, sort of about three hours north of New York, four hours in a car. Um, and I actually did my last year of school in Rome. Um, the school has a sort of exchange program there um, that I went to and uh, sort of got slightly out of the track of a New York-centric education and started thinking more about making work in Europe or the possibility of living and working in Europe because it seemed to me uh, a little bit more open, certainly a little bit more affordable than New York, maybe a little bit more honest or sort of um, possible in a way, if that makes sense. Uh, and was sort of even thinking about staying in Rome um, but this was about 2002 or 2003, and the euro, you know, was about one to one with the dollar. And price, you know, the cost of living in Rome was going up, even you know, almost monthly. You could sort of see it happening. Um, so I decided to move to Berlin and went back to the U.S. to graduate in 2003, and moved back to Berlin two days later um, without really knowing any German or anyone. Um, so it was, a, it, was a rough, it was a rough patch for the first six months or so, um, but then I sort of settled down um, and got into a sort of working, working mode that was sort of somewhat productive in Berlin. Um, I'm going to start, this picture is from 2006. I was sort of making you know, all different sorts of work for the first three years I was in Berlin. Um, I was actually making work in the room that I was sleeping in, which, which is just a terrible idea, um, especially when you're using oil paint. It's an awful, awful idea. Um, but that's what I did. Uh, and because of that, my work sort of shrunk in scale. In school, I was making work that was large-ish, not enormous, um, but you know, uh, maybe 150 centimeters on a side, something like this. Um, and then once I started working in my room at this sort of first studio in Berlin, um, the scale of things shrunk drastically, just of course for storage and for just being able to walk around and have a place to sleep. Um, so things sort of shrunk down to the range of you know, maybe 30 to 40 centimeters by 50 centimeters um, up to you know, something maybe a meter on the side, on the side. Nothing much bigger than that. Um, and you know, I was making all, this, all different sort of, sorts of things at first. Works on paper, works on panel, works on canvas. I mean, pretty much always pictures. Um, some sculptures a little bit, but it was primarily a pain, you know, painting practice. Um, and it wasn't until about 2005 when I got my own apartment, um, not a big A, but like my own sort of own sort of apartment, and um, you know, with a separate li living space and workspace that I sort of really started to be able to focus a little bit more and maybe carve out something a little bit more distinct in terms of working practice. 
So this is from the first um, two to three months that I was living in this apartment alone with a separate workspace. Um, and at the time I was working a lot with baseball, the American sport that uh, doesn't really have a lot of traction here, um, but was a sort of nice sort of vehicle for, for me to use in terms of informing a sort of set of pictures. Um, this one picture of a broom um, is sort of based on this player who religiously ate chicken before every, every game that he played. He had three chicken breasts and then um, swept certain parts of the field with a broom, um, you know, this sort of ritualistic uh, kind of um, practice that I sort of just internalized a little bit and then turned it into a broom, perhaps connected a little bit with um, you know, a chicken drumstick or a chicken-esque sort of um, handle. Um, but these were very much, this, these sort of pictures were about, um, you know, certainly working with an interior dialogue a little bit, you know, some sort of personalization of these sort of Victorian situations in a way, but then also fusing them through, um, you know, tenets of baseball, tenets of American sport, but for a European audience that wouldn't really have any knowledge um, of the sort of side stories or sub stories in the pictures. And it was almost, it wasn't important to have that sort of knowledge of these, you know, side bits or sort of um, morsels of information because they were, I think, kind of secondary. Um, again, sort of still working with ideas of baseball, things maybe started to flatten out a little bit. This was, I'd say, the most important picture that I made at that sort of younger time, for me anyway, because it sort of stopped me or sort of routed me from making pictures with a more standard sort of pictorial space, i.e., um, you know, foreground to background and midground. Um, and really sort of push things forward um, in terms of just having things um, you know, right up against the picture plane, but in a sort of not necessarily hyper flat way, there's still something very ambiguous about the space here. Um, the number 21 um, was another reference, a specific reference to a baseball player um, who actually died, I think, December 31st in 1972. Um, his name is Roberto Clemente. Um, I think it was the first sort of um, black Latino uh, player in the major leagues um, and he sort of had a reputation of the one for being an extraordinary player but was also very much involved in um, you know community work um, social work social help um, in terms of you know impoverished communities and uh, people of lesser means he died in a plane crash um, actually on the way to Nicaragua um, uh, going to help with the people that you know, an earthquake, earthquake had hit sort of at the end of 1972 and he was going to help people and he died in a plane crash um, on the way there. Um, so this is a sort of, I was thinking about him a lot, I thought about him even before I started, you know, painting seriously. I sort of was interested in him as um, a younger person, um, you know, under 15 I guess you could say. Um, and this is just sort of fusing a little bit of the absurd sort of idea of, um, you know, him having four arms. Um, and that sort of, you know, that sort of led, um, this picture sort of led into, you know, these flat, the idea of a flatness of a picture in a picture a little bit or an item inside of a picture, um, whether it's a garment or even just a, sort of a collage in a picture and not necessarily wanting to have any sort of, um, Maybe illusionistic realization or pure, you know, pure illusionism. It's not about that at all. It's still very much about um, some sort of a painterly field, I would say. Um, but then also trying to have this sort of object or this object presented in in, in a way that's not sort of straightforwardly um, imagistic or about, about the image itself. Um, this is sort of just a banner or a sort of painting of a banner devoted to an orthopedic surgeon um, who worked with a number of uh, baseball teams. He was sort of the go-to orthopedic surgeon if someone you know, destroyed their knee or destroyed um, their arm. He was the sort of, he was the, he was the master and he would uh, sort of Tweak and you know he had just an amazing amount of finesse um, and was able to bring you know people that athletes that they thought um, 
you know, were done, he would be able to do reconstructive surgery and sort of bring them back to um, a level, not necessarily where they were before, but it's certainly um, a functional level. Uh, his name is Dr. Pappas, and this is just a sort of, uh, yeah, I think it's just called Flag, uh, flag Dr. Pappas. Um, so again, you know, sort of fusing a sort of idea of banners and collage, but then, you know, presenting them not in a Trump loyal sort of way, but in a way where they're still somewhat frontal and presented um, such. This is about a hockey player in Boston. Um, ice, uh, ice hockey, yeah. Uh, his name is Cam Neely. He's a bit of a brute, uh, a roughneck, if you will. But I sort of like the idea that these, you know, these, would, these tableaus or these sort of collages would be like pushed through um, these kind of semi-macho figures, I mean these athletes, uh, into maybe a slightly more domestic or sort of tidy, um, even craft-based gentility or sort of thing. Um, so this sort of uh, collision maybe of athleticism coupled with, um, you know, even formal exploration. And the colors, I mean, the colors are half symbolic, sort of symbolic, sort of not. Um, taking a lot from team, I mean, team uniforms, three goes, or um, some of the sort of heraldry on um, either local signage, um, signage in Massachusetts, where I'm from, um, among other things. So this is, um, yeah, it's a clock, and uh, based, uh, sort of, coupled with those, uh, you know, sort of tablets or sort of presentations, these sort of um, collage wafers, I would sort of make up also uh, faux souvenirs, you know, souvenirs for teams. Teams that, number one, don't exist anymore, this is actually, um, a team that was, uh, I think, ended in 19, 1940, before uh, baseball was segregated in the United States. Um, African Americans and white people had different leagues. They played in different leagues. Um, and this is actually from, this team was in the Negro Leagues. Um, it was called the Baltimore Black Sox. So sort of coupling, you know, making a souvenir for one of those teams, um, but, you know, having a shot solid block sort of. Um, as a sort of vessel, and then you know, did painted, you know, invented still lights, or um, yeah, it sort of invented still lights of just sort of these uh, sports memorabilia, uh, like memorabilia that just never really existed. Um, this is just a stick at night, I guess. Um, Another sort of, this is still a little bit sort of loosely connected to uh, Roberto Clemente, it's called RC Collage. Um, you know, you can still see there's this sort of, you know, hinting at a, hinting at a collage or some sort of assemblage um, and kind of painted in a way where there's a little bit of an allusion to it, but it's very much also trying to, I'd say, disrupt that illusion and not necessarily have you know, an elegant sort of resolved picture with drop shadows and uh, volume and mass. I want it to, to be this sort of, um, you know, slightly awkward, uh, disjointed sort of space between something that's actually right there and then something that's very much a painting. Um, I think it's a problem that I'm still maybe working with more and more now is that I mean, what, what image, what kind of image really has any merit or what kind of image has the potential to be even vaguely exciting? I mean, someone can make, you know, stellar paintings of, uh, you know, bottles or, you know, sort of metabots or, you know, things that are just very technically adept and just hyper-fluid. Um, it's still more and more, I mean, I think, I may have even come to this a bit late, it's also a bit, it's, it's also a bit useless in a way. Um, I mean, I think using paint is uh, it's a decision, it's certainly a bit retrograde at times, but if you're going to use paint, I think that it should be used for what it is and not necessarily in the service of creating some other image that can be much done, you know, done much better with other means. Um, 
so this is a sort of weird space that I think is sort of very um, off-putting, but you know, at the same time engaging in vis uh, visual ambiguity. Um, another sort of flattened collage, if you will. Um, this one, what is it called? Oh, it's called Tobacco Sale. And it was about uh, a few paintings that I saw in the stats at the Met in New York, um, painted by anonymous, an anonymous artists of, uh, they were just signs, I mean signs that would hang out side of uh, colonial tobacco shops. So basically you know, people, boats would just um, come right up on the shore in Virginia and there would be tobacco stores sort of right there um, and just have, you know, like a bar sign, just this sort of uh, placard hanging right up front. So I sort of was thinking about that um, in this picture. It's two, from 2009. Oh yeah, sorry in terms of dates too. Uh, yeah, this is 2009, also 2009 here. Uh, just called summer collage. Uh, you know, very generic things: watermelon, and lemons, and bees. Things that, you know you often see in the summer. Um, but you know, presenting these kind of generic things in a um, perhaps a slightly novel way, and it's a sort of. Uh, I mean, I could see these in between. I mean, a little bit like a vapen or something like that. Um, you know, use it, taking cues from a vapen, but then also giving it a little bit of relief, but not relief in the sense that I really want it to be this uh, meaty or like uh, this meaty relief, if that makes any any sense. Come on, Zalanzo, flashy, flashy, flashy. I mean, as you're sort of seeing, these are all. I mean, also with the sport thing, there's there's a certain level of kind of. Um, I'd say, yeah, genericness about the sort of material selected or, you know, the sort of content selected. Things that we all sort of encounter, hopefully, on a pretty regular basis, such as a place setting in food, um, you know, a clock, uh, clothing. Uh, so, you know, taking these very sort of basic sort of generic things and almost this giving it this sort of flat-footed presentation, or this frontal presentation, but then fusing that with um, either you know, formal explorations and then also certainly um, explorations with color. And then having the sort of end result lay somewhere between signage and still life. It's another RC collage, um, 21 again. So, you know, there's sort of hints at depth and hints, hints at some sort of space, but then there's also this, um, you know, reluctance to really go fully in that direction. Um, it's called Sour Duck Collage. These are all about two feet wide. Some are a little bit smaller. Um, two feet, uh, 60 centimeters. Um, so again, yeah, foodstuffs, animals, you know, the basics, bow ties. Um, so yeah, this is from 2010. And after 2010, I sort of withdrew a little bit and um, only painted in black and white for about a year, maybe a little bit more, and then added in brown a little bit after that, and sort of going back to school in a way, a sort of formal exercise of just learning um, doing tonal exercises that I never really, you know, I don't really know what it's like to go to school in Germany, um, to an art school in the U.S. It's very, you know, very little about formal training anymore. You're taught some formal things, but uh, if you're still interested in at least using parts of that, it's up to you to kind of figure out. Um, so I sort of went back to school with myself a little bit and. Um, Work started working, you know, with a much wider range of um, tone, and then sort of moved that towards the middle and middle and middle. Um, so a lot of the kind of lights and darks that were in earlier works um, started to kind of get cut out. Uh, and this is from 2013, actually, from my first show uh, in New York, and it's just called Space. And you can still see, you know, hints of this, uh, you know, these sort of forced tablets or forced um, 
kind of slabs, you know, forced to the to the front of the picture plane, but without any kind of outline um, or sort of more linear markations. And it's called space. It's sort of hints of planets with rings and stars and galaxies and things like that. Again, the basics. Uh, I also was sort of getting very into German health food um, at the time. Uh, you know, in logo painting, you know, it's been done a billion times by people that are good at painting logos and sort of painting commercial sort of things. But I think that it also provides, you know, the chance for some maybe more interior inspection. Um, you know, and this is sort of just based on the bag of Seidenbacher, um, probably Dinkle Flakes. Um, and I mean, it's a bit larger, it's maybe a meter, a meter, maybe 90 centimeters high. Um, and this was sort of around the time when I was about, you know, departing Germany, or thinking about, starting to think about departing Germany in 2013, 2014. Um, and, you know, maybe a lot of the sort of more compact ideas that I had of collage, and you know, the collage elements that were sort of brought within a picture plane and sort of forced in, and there would be a border around it, kind of opened up. And I, I sort of started to allow myself to use the whole, the whole picture in a way. Um, which was, you know, very much a relief. Uh, and so, yeah, this is, you know, certainly, um, I'd say it's, there's elements of the graphicness and certainly, a, a rec, a, you know, a sort of recognizable thing from the world, be it, you know, these, this is like Bacchus sort with of bag of, of muesli. Um, but then uh, that sort of provides a lot of area for departure, I think. Uh, this is called Die Schweiz. Um, so just to kind of, uh, yeah, it's the Swiss flag, but a little bit different. Dignita, which is just, you know, being back is actually wonderful because in the U.S., it's almost impossible. It's, it is impossible to get a Dimita um, foodstuffs. So I feel like a sort of kid in a candy store again. Not candy, of course, with like nuts. <laughs> Spinach. Um, this is from 2013, and also kind of maybe helps clarify as you know the sort of darker, sort of more outline-based sort of things drifted away. Um, and things became a little bit more about color fields. This is very much uh, about, if I can go back quickly, this painting. Um, and it was a kind of direct response to it. I mean, I, I, this painting was sort of sitting around, I think, with um, my gallery in Berlin for a while. It was just sort of there. And I think it went to a couple group shows, but it was one that I always sort of wished that I sort of had kept because, you know, it's not perfect. There's some awkward moments, but it really, sort of encapsulated, I think, what I was sort of after at that time. Um, so this is a kind of pouring of that, with, you know, an addition of a carriage kind of in the front. Um, and again, it's just, I think it's just called RC, dropping collage from the title, it's just called RC. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say about this picture other than that I, I really love it. In a way that I, I, I don't know, some painters I know really like everything they make, or not everything, but a lot of things that they make, I find that a, sort of a problematic approach, but this is just a picture that, for some reason, I really like. Um, also, with uh, sort of maybe German health food, this has become very interested in the sort of German public services. I mean, public, private, the Beifau gave, um, you know, of course, the public transport system in Berlin, uh, you know, they can be intolerable at times, of course. I mean, be it the controllers or also the price hikes. Um, but then also, I sort of marvel at the general functionality of the system, especially when compared to how things operate in the U.S. Another thing being um, the Wasserbetrieb in Berlin. Uh, 
sort of been fascinated by and that you know the, the quality of water that they sort of recycle, produce, and you know offer to um, to Seattle citizen is of a superior quali uh, quality to bottled water, um, and it is ex you know, exceptionally well organized um, and implemented. In the U.S., it's also excellent, but not quite to the same degree. Um, so these sort of outfits, you know, and I think they're um, tremendous human uh, human accomplishments in terms of the, from an engineering standpoint, um, from an organizational standpoint, that things like this can happen. I think is extraordinary. Um, so I would say these are maybe a little bit of an homage to that, but then also. Um, Maybe trying to visually re-register what someone might think about their their presence in a way. And this is called the Thunder. Uh, this is a bit larger. It's like a meter high, and it's more recent. This is from a presentation at Freeze in New York a couple months ago or a month ago. Um, and you know, same sort of flat and painterly tactics are applied to uh, a medical school. In, in New Hampshire, which is sort of where, if I'm living in the U.S., that's kind of where I'm living now, um, between Florida and New Hampshire, um, a little bit in New York as well. Um, but this is a medical school that was incorporated in uh, 1797, hence the sort of things down here. So I sort of see it almost like a school banner, a school flyer, but then also being repurposed, you know, very much as a painting or perhaps even like a tavern sign. Um, uh, this is sort of new working of the, the ME logo, you know, formerly Ajit when I was in when I was in Italy, uh, it was Ajit and I think what Ajit sort of came under ENI in, in two thousand and three, right as I was leaving Rome. You know, and I'd from the first second when I was in Rome, it was really the first time I'd ever been in Europe, and was immediately drawn to uh, just the object logo. I thought it was just one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. So I kind of just worked with things with it on the side um, for a while. I just was kind of reluctant always to make a painting of it um, because it's just it's just so recognizable and it's just so, such a you know prevalent you know prominent sort of image. Um, but it got to a point where I just, I just kind of had to just do it. Um, and just added a few more lights. Um, this might be the last one, but this is uh, sort of an extended version of, I'm from Massachusetts in the US, which is sort of looks like that shape on the top with a little arm sticking out, that's Cape Cod. Um, and this picture is a sort of fusion of some really terrible graffiti in Berlin, that's also just excellent graffiti because it's just so so odd, um, and that sort of that graffiti has been fused with um, the sort of the logo of the state, the Massachusetts State Lottery, um, the Lotto. Uh, so this kind of combination of those two things, and then just like a sort of even like a lotto ticket at the bottom, just the numbers you would sort of select, um, and this is a sort of about a meter high. A little bit taller, maybe. so um, this is kind of where this is where I'm kind of at now. I would say, um, perhaps um, I would say that things have certainly flattened out from the earlier images in terms of having a slightly more definable space. It's, right now, I'm so seeing much more interested in um, pictures that are on the edge of really not being pictures anymore. Um, and I think that's sort of, you know, about the idea of we all have enough pictures already, we all have enough images already, like an image that's just so, you know, excellent or, you know, you look at, I don't want to say names, but, you know, you, you have these painters that are making images that are ready to go, that is this, this painter is making this kind of picture. Um, and like, say, that's, that's this person's work, that's this person's work, that's this person's work. I mean, I think right now it's a very sort of dull thing to be doing um, from a production standpoint or even from, you know, a visual standpoint. Um, I mean, I still think painting has a tremendous amount of potential. 
there have been things said, there was one really great line, I think Dave Hickey said it about, you know, painting is done as a major art, and that very much, you know, that might be true. Um, and it's just gonna become like jazz, like a bunch of people that are, you know, pretty fucking good at it, but they just sort of keep going around each other, like making more decent jazz and making more decent paintings, you know. Um, which is, it's like scarily kind of true. Um, but I think if you, if one kind of can start to really tear away the picture, maybe sort of be reluctant to even make a picture, you know, like a picture's picture, something like that, um, the painting can, you know, potentially rejuvenate itself and not necessarily reclaim any sort of form of glory. I don't think it's about glory at all. I mean, I think that's a very kind of silly idea anyway. Um, but as, you know, sort of something with potential or, you know, something viable, um, not just something pleasant. So, those sort of meandering are sort of all around, but if you guys want to ask any questions or if you have any other sort of points that maybe could shape things a little bit better. Um, I'd be open for sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Ryan, for this introduction. <coughs> Are there any further questions? This is the chance. pictures and images, not about paintings most of the time. Mm -hmm. Does that have any... Oh, maybe it's, yeah, I mean, it's, pain, paintings, paintings, yeah. No, I mean, but, but does it have a meaning for you to talk about pictures and images, but not about paintings? Just I usually call it, if I say, if I say, usually I'll refer to my paintings as pictures. Okay, um, no, it, I thought it might have, have a, another meaning. No, they're very much paintings in the sense that they're meant to be seen in person, for sure. Um, or they're meant, you know, they're meant to be there. They're not constructed with ideas of a larger distribution in mind, or sort of reproduction and then distribution. Mm -hmm. um, in that sense, they're very much, you know, they are very much about service. They are very much about sort of these long-standing, um, you know, tenets though, with painting. That said, you know, if I call it a picture, it's probably more just a way of like. Sure, I've got Are there any further questions? Okay. So then, then just let me ask a question. Now, what's, what's the upcoming project you're working on? I mean, I have a show in London this fall um, with Laura Bartlett. Um, and we'll certainly be working, I think, trying to work more in between the sort of line between uh, signage, I mean, sort of visual signage, be it um, advertising signage and or civic signage, um, that sort of line between um, the still life and perhaps even sort of the painterly, the, pa the all over painterly monochrome that's not quite um, the monochrome. That makes a sense. Um, size wise, scale wise, they'll be similar. I would say all nothing larger than A0. A0 to sort of A3, all within that kind of range. So. Um, I have a question. Um, you said that in the earlier works you use uh, the color as symbols. Uh, and these uh, <coughs> paintings, there's a lot of white, and um, I have the question, is the, the color white now again a symbol for something which... Um it was very much, uh, when I had this period in 2010 where I sort of took yeah. all the color out and just sort of work, started working in black and white, I've been slowly been able to reintegrate more saturated colors or more kind of immediately detectable hues. Because everything now just looks so garish. Like it looks so. Even if you know you put out, if I put out like an earth tone in 2011 or 2012, after working only in black and white, it just looked um, 
you know, incredibly saturated and just sort of unpleasant in a lot of ways. With paintings now, there is a lot more white uh, in both uh, titan dyes, like titanium white, and then also um, I work a lot with uh, lead white, um, live ice, which I, you know is quite hard to get in Germany now and perhaps um, fully illegal. Uh, but I did manage to, you know, bring it a little bit, a little bit with me. Um, but it, it's kind of it's this idea of color that it's very much there, uh, but then you want it. It's just barely on the edge of being detectable, or you know, working within a very sort of working within a narrow, very narrow range of hue, but then also a very narrow range, range of saturation, and sometimes even a really narrow um, range of, of tonality, you know, of sort of light and dark. You know, kind of going against what one sort of learns in any sort of foundation class or foundation sort of thing. Like if you don't have you know a large separation of saturation. You need a large separation of of tone somewhere, or um, you know this kind of thing. And so trying to break these rules a little bit, uh, but very much you know also having these things that are barely a picture, but then can somehow almost you know give it this kind of imagistic quality that maybe like an individual hasn't quite seen before. You know? In the way that you might look at like the background of like a pisago mm -hmm. or um, um, like this, a, a monochrome painter, Marsha Hafif, who's uh, you know working in, in the southwest. You know these pictures that <laughs> almost like really shouldn't have been made, but then there's there's moments of them in them that just make the pictures that you just haven't really seen before. Um, and walking around any fair now or any sort of thing, you know, eighty-five to ninety-five percent of these pictures, they're incredibly well done. I'm like. They're, they're interesting pictures, but they're they're not like the pictures that are for me um, like scream very much visually. They're they're highly functional. They're elegant. They can be attractive, but they're not really doing something that painting has the potential to do. I think in terms of being a sort of very disassociated sort of visual sort of thing. So, who are your favorite painters? Oh, I don't know. Right now. Uh, in terms of contemporary painters or any yeah. Chardin, like forever, always Chardin. Like um, he, if someone I can sort of keep can keep going back to a Chardin, Bona for sure. Um, I think the, in, in Chardin because of the order, um, Bona because he was really this is you know to me. Probably, you know, at least in the 20th century, like the greatest accomplishment in painting, just in terms of these images, images that were really from nowhere. Like these were absolutely, these were raw invention, and then not really also defined at the same time. They were very sort of diffuse and very sort of um, elusive in a way. Uh, in terms of contemporary painting, that's harder to say. Um, I don't look at painting so much. I looked, you know, I devoured painting, at least contemporary painting. Uh, I learned as much as I could, looked at as much as I could up until about five years ago. Um, and now I don't really, I mean, I look, of course, you have to be informed and you have to sort of keep up on things. Um, but in terms of painting right now, I mean, I think certainly, um, I'll, t I'll tell you like three or four by the end of the lunch, I promise. I'm taking that approach in one place. Yeah? Um, you said that you introduced the smaller scale due to the storage problems in the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, and then when, I, when I seen your, uh, so your um, this year, I was kind of surprised how small the scale actually was. And, um, I was wondering if it does make any difference to you if you work on it. Larger scales or smaller scales, or and, and uh, if you intend to go back to larger scales, because you said in the U.S. they were larger. Yeah, I mean, I'm slowly, slowly working up to sort of larger things now. Um, more right now is an exercise than anything else. Uh, I mean, the way that sort of an individual beholds or sees a larger picture is much different than you know one sees a smaller picture. 
a larger picture asserts itself into an environment and it becomes the environment in some sort of way as opposed to sort of looking through a window or sort of a people. Um, and I think working small affords one the ability to work with, work with surface a lot more. Um, you know, with large pictures, there tends to be uh, a very different way of handling paint. It's, and it's usually, usually thinner. Um, there's not as much emphasis on any given passage or any given moment. It's about a sort of much larger sort of structure. Um, it's just a different way of making work. Uh, that being said, I think surface and painting right now is, you know, it's an issue. It's, there's a lot of really boring, there's a lot of, to me, there's a lot of really boring surfaces. Um, and if you're going to be making paintings and not images or not sort of poster paintings, um, it should, maybe, surface could come back into the conversation a little bit more. Um, but I think, you know, for any practitioner, if working in sort of different levels or different scales of things, it's always going to be informative. Um, whether or not it's successful, uh, I, mean, I think there's certainly like an, an intimate kind of strain, strain running through my work um, that is not necessarily congruous to painting, you know, so much larger. I think for me, the limit is really sort of body size. You've got to be able to sort of truck things around with one person. Um, you know, at least that's kind of the way that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I have one more question. Uh, like the point of intimacy was interesting for me because um, I can see like um, the distance between your own practice as a painter, or like this is not a make, like a critique or anything, but just like your practice as a painter, which is like in general a very solitude like activity, kind of maybe similar to that of a writer or a poet or whatever. And then you choose topics which are representative of a larger scale or maybe body or community like a state lottery or sports clubs. And then also from when you choose an athlete, it's someone who actually engages in the community and kind of puts his work again on a broader scale. And um, yeah, I was just wondering or uh, where this comes from, like this so, very solitary, no, the solitary really... practice of painting and then picking like BVG, mm -hmm. uh, Stadtwerke or like the athlete that goes to help a lot of people in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really, uh, it's a really good point. Um, and it's kind of, it's certainly about, it's certainly about fact and fiction. And it's certainly about um, an exterior space um, and an interior space. And it's about reprocessing that sort of information. And then I think earlier, you know, in the earlier work, things were more colorful. They were probably a little bit more, I think, playful or just sort of, I mean, there's even a, like a certain amount of silliness to it in terms of the way that I would engage with, you know, the idea of these athletes being associated with these sort of, you know, pastel sort of um, constructions um, is very much a, a kind of a little bit of a kind of play. Um, with the machismo, with also like European sport versus American sport, versus you know, and then also thinking about that as an individual and what that really means, but then really also keeping all that absolutely separate and just using it purely as a vehicle for like pictorial exploration. Um, you know, some some pictures like the like the one with the grapes on the plate. Some of those are just very sort of raw, like just like basic, you know, almost signs. I mean, it's painterly signs, but signs that are I mean, universal, um, as opposed to like having a specific information. Um, <coughs> I don't think I, I need uh, those sort of facts to be included in a picture, um, but I think it provides a nice kind of housing, like a, a housing, if you will. I don't know um, if that word kind of works. Uh, Yeah, I think it's like it provides a, it's, it provides a sort of housing, if you will. Um, yeah. I was I was wondering why do you frame all your uh, paintings on the show? Up there, I was wondering a bit because um, I like them as an object, mm -hmm. and it's something you add at the end after it's 
Yeah, I started, as you can see, I think I started framing things in like 2009. I, uh, I have a side project of kind of painting bombs, um, like water pipes. Uh, just was a sort of exercise, like this still life sort of going on the side. And I framed one just for, just for fun, really for fun. It was a little bit before, I mean, frames have kind of come back a little bit more, and you see frames a lot more now. Um, but I, really, I liked it so much that I framed my next show, I think a show in 2009. Uh, and I liked the domesticity of it, and how quaint, I mean, they're smaller pictures, so you know, the frame sort of lends itself naturally to uh, that kind of presentation. Uh, now, I think of them structurally, structurally as much, I mean, I really am making the paintings with the frames in mind. You know, not absolutely in mind, but certainly consider that they will be framed. And as I'm starting to work with margins a little bit more and play with margins of what potential sort of margins have, um, you know, the frame kind of comes into comes into question a lot more. Uh, it really emphasizes the fact that it's a picture, and it isolates it. And I think that from a formal and also kind of psychological space, uh, it's you know it's it really works and it it enhances the picture for sure. Um, artist frames, all these sort of when frames start becoming even more sort of assertive and more, you know, a part of the work. I'm not into that as much right now. I just sort of like it's slightly clinical sort of isolation of it. You say you had a side project painting water pipes? Yeah, like just bomb. Pipe. And not so much anymore. I used to Right, paint. but how does that, um, I mean, I don't know like how it makes me laugh, but how does that? It was just like one of these things, you know, you have something in the studio where you're just drawing or you just have these sort of things where you just have something kind okay, of... Okay, but you aren't painting onto water pipes. Oh, no. Okay. No, no. <laughs> I'm not very good at smoking weed. I wish I was better at it. <laughs> yeah. okay. I try. Yeah. I mean, I'm no pro, for sure. So. Are there any further questions? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ryan.